Picture a country smaller than New Jersey, sitting in one of the world's driest regions, somehow producing 20% more water than it actually needs. That's exactly what Israel has pulled off. They've gone from desperate water shortages to literally selling water to their neighbors. But how exactly? Let's find out. When Israel was established in 1948, the water situation was brutal. You had waves of immigrants flooding into a country where half the land got zero rainfall. The north had the Sea of Galilee and some decent precipitation, but the south? Bone-dry desert stretching for miles. By the 1950s, they were staring down an existential crisis. Cities needed water, farms needed water, industry needed water, and there simply wasn't enough to go around. The math was simple and terrifying. Without a solution, the country would fail. That's when Israeli engineers proposed something that sounded completely insane. Build a massive water highway that would suck water out of the Sea of Galilee and pump it 200 meters uphill, then send it through the longest tunnel in the world, straight into the desert. The national water carrier became one of the most ambitious engineering projects of the 20th century. We're talking 130 kilometers of tunnels, canals, pipelines, and pumping stations that would make modern infrastructure projects look modest. The main tunnel alone stretched 17 kilometers underground, longer than the distance from Manhattan to Brooklyn. The scale of the pumping operation was mind-blowing. These weren't your average water pumps. They had to lift millions of gallons of water more than 200 meters above sea level every single day. That's like pumping water to the top of a 60-story skyscraper, continuously, forever. When it opened in 1964, it completely transformed the country. Areas that had been uninhabitable deserts suddenly bloomed with cities and farms. The Negev Desert, which covers 60% of Israel's land area, went from empty wasteland to productive agricultural region almost overnight. But here's the crazy part. They were so confident this would work that they bet the entire country's budget on it. The project cost over a billion dollars in today's money, which for a tiny nation in the 1960s was an absolutely massive gamble. If it failed, Israel would have been bankrupt. Initially, about 80% of the water went to agriculture and only 20% to drinking water. But as cities expanded and the population grew, more and more of it shifted to urban use. By the 1990s, half of Israel's drinking water was flowing through this system. The international implications were huge too. In 1994, as part of the peace agreement with Jordan, Israel started supplying Jordan with 25 million cubic meters of water annually from the Sea of Galilee. Later, they doubled that to 50 million cubic meters. Think about that. A country that couldn't supply itself in 1948 was exporting water by 1994. But then nature threw them a curveball. Around 2017, after five straight years of drought, the Sea of Galilee dropped to record low levels. The lake that had been the foundation of Israel's water security was literally shrinking before their eyes. Most countries would have panicked, Israel doubled down on an even crazier idea, turning the Mediterranean Sea into drinking water on an industrial scale. Desalination had been around for decades, but it was expensive, energy intensive, and produced relatively small amounts of water. Israeli engineers completely reimagined the process using advanced reverse osmosis technology. The Ashkelon desalination plant, which came online in the early 2000s, was one of the largest in the world at the time. But instead of stopping there, they built more and more. Today, Israel operates five massive desalination plants along the Mediterranean coast, cranking out 600 million cubic meters of fresh water every year. To put that in perspective, that's 80% of Israel's domestic drinking water coming from the ocean. For a desert country, that's like discovering an infinite faucet. But here's where things get absolutely wild. In 2022, Israel did something no country in human history had ever attempted. They started taking desalinated seawater and pumping it back into the Sea of Galilee to keep the lake alive during dry years. Wrap your head around that for a second. They're refilling a natural freshwater lake with artificial freshwater made from the sea. It sounds like science fiction, but it's happening right now. They built a 13 kilometer underground pipeline connecting the lake to multiple desalination plants with plans to expand the system even further. For the first time ever, desalination technology was being used to stabilize an entire ecosystem, not just meet human needs. The engineering challenges were enormous. You can't just dump desalinated water 
into a lake and hope for the best. The chemical composition has to be perfect, the temperature has to match, and the flow rates have to be carefully controlled to avoid disrupting the lake's natural balance. While desalination grabbed headlines, Israel was quietly perfecting another impossible feat, turning sewage into food. Over 90% of Israel's wastewater gets treated and reused, mostly for agriculture. The star of this system is the Shafdan plant near Tel Aviv, which processes sewage from the entire metropolitan area and then pumps the cleaned water south to irrigate crops in the desert. The process is incredibly sophisticated. Raw sewage goes through multiple stages of treatment, including biological processing, filtration and disinfection. What comes out the other end is cleaner than the water in many rivers around the world. This recycled water irrigates thousands of acres of farmland in the Negev desert. Oranges, cucumbers, tomatoes and dozens of other crops grow in soil that gets zero natural rainfall, fed entirely by water that started as sewage in Tel Aviv. The scale is massive. The Shaftan plant alone processes 140 million cubic meters of wastewater annually. That's enough to supply drinking water to a city of 2 million people. But instead, it's growing food in the desert. But even the best water supply means nothing if you waste it through inefficient irrigation. That's where Israeli engineers invented something that changed farming worldwide drip irrigation. Traditional irrigation involves spraying water across entire fields, losing huge amounts to evaporation and runoff. Drip irrigation delivers water directly to the roots of each plant through a network of tubes and emitters. The efficiency gains are staggering. Plants absorb up to 95% of the water delivered through drip systems, compared to maybe 50% with traditional spraying methods. That means farms can produce the same amount of food with half the water, or double their production with the same water supply. Israeli company Netafim pioneered this technology in the 1960s and now exports it to over 110 countries. From California vineyards to Indian cotton fields, drip irrigation systems designed in Israel are feeding the world while conserving water. The technology keeps evolving too. Modern systems include sensors that monitor soil moisture, weather stations that adjust watering schedules, and even AI systems that optimize water delivery for maximum crop yield. Today, Israeli water technology companies are some of the most successful in the world. IDE Technologies has built desalination plants from California to Australia to India. Their plants produce over 3 million cubic meters of fresh water daily worldwide. Netafim's drip irrigation systems cover over 10 million hectares globally. That's an area larger than South Korea. Their technology helps farmers in water-stressed regions grow more food with less water. Mekarot, Israel's national water company, exports expertise to countries dealing with water scarcity. They've helped design water systems in Cyprus, Ghana and dozens of other nations. The economic impact is enormous. Israel's water technology sector generates billions in export revenue annually. What started as a desperate attempt to solve a local crisis has become a global industry. The numbers game. The scale of Israel's water infrastructure becomes clear when you look at the numbers. The country produces about 2.8 billion cubic meters of water annually from all sources combined. That breaks down to roughly 600 million from desalination, 400 million from groundwater, 500 million from the Sea of Galilee and other surface sources, and 500 million from treated wastewater. For a country of 9.5 million people, that works out to about 295 cubic meters per person per year. Compare that to countries like Yemen, which has less than 100 cubic meters per person annually, or even water-rich nations like Canada, which uses about 1,400 cubic meters per person, but has vastly more natural supply. The economic efficiency is remarkable too. Israel's water sector operates profitably while keeping prices reasonable for consumers. The average Israeli household pays about $2.50 per cubic meter for water, which is competitive with developed nations that have abundant natural water supplies. Israel's water technology sector continues pushing boundaries with next-generation innovations that sound like science fiction. Atmospheric water generation systems literally pull moisture out of thin air using condensation technology. 
Israeli company Watergen has developed machines that can produce thousands of litres of drinking water daily from atmospheric humidity, even in desert conditions. Solar-powered desalination eliminates the energy cost barrier that has limited desalination adoption in developing countries. Israeli researchers have developed systems that use concentrated solar power to drive the desalination process without requiring grid electricity. Smart water networks use IoT sensors and AI to detect leaks, optimize pressure and predict maintenance needs across entire municipal water systems. Israeli companies like Takadu provide these systems to water utilities worldwide. Advanced membrane technologies are making desalination even more efficient. New materials can filter salt from seawater using less energy while lasting longer than current membranes. Israel's water abundance has completely changed Middle Eastern geopolitics. Instead of fighting over scarce water resources, Israel now has surplus capacity to share with neighbors. The 2020 Abraham Accords included water cooperation agreements. Israel is sharing desalination technology with the UAE and exploring joint water projects with other Gulf states. The Jordan River, which was once a source of regional tension, is now supplemented by Israeli desalinated water flowing to Jordan. This has reduced pressure on the natural river system while meeting growing demand. Even with traditional adversaries, water cooperation continues. Israel still supplies water to Palestinian territories and has offered to expand cooperation despite political tensions. So, the next time someone tells you something is impossible, point them to Israel. They turned one of the world's driest regions into a water exporter. And if they can do that, maybe impossible is just another engineering challenge waiting to be solved. But what do you think? Could Israel's water innovations be scaled up to solve global water scarcity? Or are there limits to what technology can achieve? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear whether you think we can engineer our way out of resource scarcity or if there are some problems too big for technology to solve.